So this is a tricky one. In South Korea, there's two attitudes towards black people. So they will always ask you where you're from. If you're a miguk, miguk, America, you get that American privilege. Africa, which is their way of saying Africa, you don't get that American privilege. Welcome to the Melanated Files. In this series, we highlight and share the stories of black people from across the globe. Remember to subscribe to this channel for weekly videos and also follow us on social media for regular updates. Let's get into the interview. My name is Makiba and I was born in the Virgin Islands. Um, when I was 12, I moved to Florida. So I'm from the States and now I live in South Korea. Honestly, South Korea because it was the most lucrative. I graduated college. I did my last semester in Brazil. And even though I was getting my degree, I knew I didn't want to go into my career field. And I just had to sit and was like, what do I want to do? And I realized I want to travel. I want to see the world. I want to have experiences for myself. And I had to figure out how to do that and still be able to pay my student loans. So I looked into different things, becoming an au pair, uh, working on a cruise ship. And I found teaching English was something, all you needed was a college degree and you could do it. And South Korea was the highest paid market. So here I am. So I've been teaching now two years. Um, tomorrow, I will begin my third academic year as a teacher here in South Korea. I teach at an elementary school. So in Korea, the legal age to start teaching English is third grade. So I teach my babies from third grade to sixth grade. And my experience has been pretty good. Um, it's really easy. I had a lot of anxiety coming because I'm of teachers. My mom's a teacher, my grandmother was a teacher, my sisters are teachers. And it's kind of our family joke right now because the one thing I stood on was like, I'm not gonna be a teacher. Because in the States, teachers don't make money and about my money. So it's like the biggest family joke that now I'm a teacher. But comparatively, it's two different things. I, I like to say I'm mostly a glorified babysitter that I have fun with my kids because they have a Korean teacher in the classroom with me. So my job is more about getting them invested in English by enjoying it and doing fun things because like the structural, the grammar, the writing, my co-teacher handles that. So I'm more like implementing what they learn in conversations, in games. So my experience has been really great. I have a great school. I have a good team. They don't really talk to me, but they support me and they respect that I know what I'm doing and they give me free reign to teach my kids how I see fit, which is something I definitely appreciate. Do I have any ambitions for my life in South Korea? No. <laughs> South Korea is just an experience to say I travel the world and to try to pay down on my student debt. I enjoy Korea, I really do. I enjoy the financial freedom. I'm living the life I feel at 28. They told me I should be living in the States with two college degrees. I pay all my bills and then I still have extra money to do anything I want. Like if my roommate, not roommate, my neighbor, be like, hey, let's go to dinner tonight. I don't have to look at my bank account like, if I go out to dinner, I can't buy groceries or I can't put gas in my car. I don't have to worry about that. And then I can travel. So the financial freedom there is a relief. And then also, I don't speak Korean. I don't look Korean. So all the standards they have to confirm to, because Korea is actually very rigid and strict. It doesn't apply to me. I'm not their beauty standard. I'm a bigger person. I'm black. I have all this curly hair. Just those are not the things admired in Korean standard of beauty. So I don't even have to worry about fitting in because our standards of beauty are completely different. So I have no ambitions here. I feel like I'm just a guest because it's easy for me. So I'm just here till my bad days outnumber my good days and then it'll be time to go home. The thing I like most about South Korea personally is the freedom. So I'm very big on family. I love my family. I'm one of five for my mom. I have two more siblings for my dad. So I'm from a big family and we're very close knit, which was easy in the Virgin Islands because it's this big. So we all live together, but we're all spread out in Florida now. So if my nephew has a soccer game, it's the family group chat, like his soccer game is this Saturday, we're the type that like, okay, I'm coming. But if I live four hours away, I have to drive four hours to Miami 
to be with my family. And I don't mind, but when you start to add up that time and the just the level of commitment, it's kind of burdensome. I love it, but in retrospect, it's kind of a burden. So here I have no attachments, no family here. The friends I have here, we're not super like, oh, we meet every Friday, every Thursday. Like there's none of that. So there's a freedom of just enjoying the space I'm in without worrying about any commitments not being met or if I forgot anything or if I need to be there for anyone else. So it's kind of like a selfish time for me here in Korea. I guess to be me for me. I'm not someone's daughter, someone's sister, someone's anything. I'm just me. And it's kind of a freeing experience. I enjoy that. <laughs> oh, Korea. Um, so this is gonna sound weird after what I just said I like the most. What I like the least is how far away I am from the people I love the most. So it at minimum cost me $1,200 and at least 15 hours to see my family. And that's, that's kind of hard. Um, in Korean culture, like actually me physically being here. Um, so as a black American and from the Caribbean, I was raised to be a very strong person. And as a woman, I have a lot of opinions and I, I'm, I have ownership of who I am and my thoughts and the things I believe in. And that's very at odds with Korea. Korea is very hierarchical and still like patriarchal. Yeah, like men still kind of run things. So like, for instance, at work, if I need to talk to my principal, there's five people I need to talk to before I can talk to my principal. And it's like, I don't need five people to be a go in between to, that I need a sick day. I'm not even asking for a sick day. I'm just kind of letting you know I'm not going to be here. And Korea is just very much this person can only talk to this person and this person talks to this person. And that just seems cumbersome to me. It's like, I know who I need to talk to. That's who I'm going to talk to. So that's a bit annoying with Korea. But it's their culture. So you just kind of respect it. And as a foreigner, they give you the grace of, oh, you don't know any better. So there's that. Mm, my favorite Korean food. One of the things I really like is a snack they have in the like wintertime. It's called hodok. It's like a kind of pancake-esque but it's more fried and it's filled with like sugar and peanuts. That's really good. It really kind of tastes like a funnel cake, like the fairs you have in the States. I really like that. Um, kimchi has grown on me. I like cabbage in general. So kimchi, kimchi is good. It's not like, oh my God, I need to go get kimchi, but it's always there, so I eat it. That's about it. Like Koreans eat a lot of seafood and pork, two things I don't eat. So I don't really explore much with Korean foods because they're also very, like, you know, Burger King, have it your way. Korea don't play that. Like you can literally go to a restaurant and they make a soup and you can be like, hey, can you not put the meatballs in? No, 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 it can't, can't, can't. I'm watching you make it. It's the last thing you put in. Just don't put it in. I'll pay for it. No, 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 can't, can't, can't. So Korea is very big on not changing things, so I don't really eat out much. I eat a lot of rice and kimchi. The best life, life advice I've ever received. I think one of the things that has made life easier for me is focusing on people's good qualities. If someone has nine bad qualities and only one good one, focus on the good quality. Because what you pour into people and what you give energy to, you'll see blossom. I'm not saying disregard people's bad qualities. Be aware of them so you know you know what to do. But just focus on the good and you'll see a lot more positivity in life. My proudest accomplishment in life right now to date is, I think I've gotten to a point in my life where I enjoy being me. I've always been a pretty confident person, pretty outgoing, happy. But I think I'm at a point where I'm always okay with me, regardless of who's around or what spaces I'm in. And I'm happy to say I did that by 28. I feel like you'll meet people who aren't happy with who they are at 48, 58. So yeah, right now my proudest accomplishment is being happy to be who I am in any space that I'm in. Being a black woman in South Korea. 
I do you one better. Being a big black woman in South Korea has been an experience. Um, like I said, the standards of beauty in South Korea are vastly different from the things I hold as beautiful. So thin, um, very pale makeup, a certain hairstyle, very straight hair, thin, pale skin. None of these things apply to me. Unless you ask my mom, she said I'm very pale right now, but we're not gonna go there. I'm a nice butterscotch when the sun shines. Um, so being me in South Korea is just being confident in who I am, regardless of anybody else's opinions. I mean, you kind of have to have tough skin here. Koreans are very direct. So I found it funny that we, I don't know, in the West, or at least in the US, or in the States, because I don't know about too many other places, you don't call somebody fat. You'll be like, oh, she's plump, or she's heavy set. But my kids, when we're learning like descriptive her, they'll be like, teacher, small? teacher fat and like you know it's like wait a wait a minute we can fight but then you realize like no I just taught these words fat and slim the child is correct you know so you just have to have this tough skin because we're taught that's not polite and I do teach my kids like oh you shouldn't really you know point out someone's characteristics but that's just Koreans like you'll come to work and be like are you tired you look tired or Oh, rough night, your eyes, eyes so, ooh. And it's just like, your mama. <laughs> like, you just wanna be like, who are you talking to? But that's just how it is. So, um, you get the stairs sometimes. Luckily, I live in Chonan, so I'm about an hour south of Seoul. And there's like a few universities around that have uh, international students. And then also in my program, there's 60 teachers. About like 10 of us are black which is not common. So I'm in a very lucky position where even though my city is smaller than Seoul, there's actually a lot of foreigners. So we don't get as much staring, but it still happens. But so sometimes you'll have on the subway, people don't want to stand next to you or they don't want to sit next to you. Different things like that. But for the most part, Koreans are really nice and very welcoming and I enjoy it. The funniest thing that has happened to me in South Korea as a black woman, uh, the first night my friends took, us, took me out, all of us were on the subway, we were coming back. And it's like the last train, so it was about 11.30 midnight-ish. And there was a group of like old men on the train, shwasted. The soju, you could smell it, they were loud. Then you had some other people over here, they were talking. And then there's the group of us, foreigners, all black. I think one of our friends with us was white. And we're talking. And I know like in Korea, you don't really talk on public transportation. But at this point, it's almost midnight. And there's three other loud conversations going on. So we're like, okay, we'll, we are able to talk. No one, we're not disrupting anyone. Somebody, grandpa, got up from his seat down the train, walked past one of the groups that was talking to come to us pull out his phone with Google Translate and said, please, quiet. And we all stopped and looked at him. And then one of us just started laughing. So we all started laughing because it was like, you had to pass other people that are talking, people you could talk to in Korean. You didn't ask them to be quiet, but you felt empowered to come to a group of foreigners to tell us we have to be quiet. So it was a bit annoying, but we all laughed it off and he kind of just went and sat back down and we did quiet down a bit, but we like black people, one person laughed, we all laughed. So we had a good five minutes of just laughing. And that was my first experience with Korea. And it was, you just gotta laugh at it. If everybody was listening to me right now, as you should be, subscribe, it's a great YouTube channel. Um, I tell the world, Hmm. Someone else's light shining doesn't dim yours. <laughs> Let everybody shine that just more light. And you never be afraid to shine brighter in fear of dimming someone else's light. We can all be bright together. The biggest lesson I've learned in life is just do it. <laughs> you waste a lot of time, energy, giving yourself anxiety by trying to think through what is gonna happen. I think one of the coolest things my mom instilled in me is you can't hold fear and faith. You have to pick one. So either you're gonna put your trust in God 
and be okay with everything that comes from it or you're gonna be afraid of what's happening and you're gonna stunt yourself from getting where you're going. So be faithful and not fearful. I know it's not my first memory, but it's one of my vivid younger memories. Um, I learned how to swim by jumping in the deep end. So during the summer, my mom would take us to this pool and all my older siblings and cousins and neighborhood kids, they could all swim. My little four-year-old self could not swim. I had the, the floaties. I don't know if y'all remember the floaties on the hands. And I had to stay in like the shallow end. And like one day I was just over it. I went, got up out the pool, took off my little floaties, walked around and hopped in the deep end. And like my mom to this day will tell me like everybody jumped up to like run in the pool to get me and they just saw my little chubby self come up. Doop, 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 doop. And that was the day I learned to swim. I was four years old and I remember it. I remember jumping in the pool. And yeah, that was one of my earliest, earliest memories. Oh, one of the biggest ways South Korea is different from the States, safety. Safety is a big one. That is one thing I respect about South Korea. So when I came here, so instinctively, I'm a family girl, kids, cousins, little nephews, nieces running around, or just the neighborhood kids. You always keep an eye on kids. You're in Walmart, anywhere, you just have an eye on the kids. Here, they let little kids do whatever they want because it's so safe. You will see five-year-old kids riding the bus by themselves, walking to school by themselves, going to piano lessons by themselves. Small children, five-year-old children just do -do 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 walking by themselves and it freaked me out. But then I had to realize that is awesome that kids that small and that young are safe in this country that they can do whatever they need to do without parental supervision. So that's definitely, you can't do that in the States. You can't even walk down in your own street anymore without somebody trying to snatch you up. So I would think that was one of the biggest things. And I definitely respect South Korea for that. One thing in the world, if I could change, what would it be? Universal education. Right now, education is mostly linked to money. If you have money, you get good education. If you're poor, you either don't get education or you don't get good education. And I don't think education and money should be correlated. If we're all educated, it would be a better place. Okay, so this is a tricky one. In South Korea, there's two attitudes towards black people. So they will always ask you where you're from. If you're a Miguk, Miguk America, you get that American privilege. Africa, which is their way of saying Africa, you don't get that American privilege. So they have two ways they treat us. So in general, it's not a very high opinion. Um, we play sports, we dance well, and we're good at sex. That is the three things South Korea thinks about black people. And then that they fear us. So it's kind of like interesting. We're good at sex and we play sports and we dance and sing well, but then you're afraid of us. But it's changing because it's the younger generation is outpacing the older people. You have the internet. And luckily for these kids, they have a lot more black English teachers and they get to interact with us daily and see like, we're just regular people. So it's changing, but thanks to the media, we see you America. There's not the best representation of black people worldwide. One person dead or alive I would like to have dinner with and why? Honestly, right now, I just wish I could have dinner with my mom. I miss my mom. She gets on my everlasting nerves. I promise you she does. But she's my favorite person in the world. I love my mother so much. She's definitely alive. She's in Florida. Hey, Ma, because I know you're going to watch this. So my mom, I love her to death. And there's no feeling like being with someone who loves you unconditionally. And right now, for me, as a single person, it's my mother. So definitely my mom. Right now, if anybody fly Michelle out, somebody send her to me. My secret superpower. So I think my secret superpower is loving and encouraging the people around me. I don't think there's anything beyond my control in this world. Like, I can be a millionaire, I can do all these things. Will I do them? Eh. But I see it in my friends. I am the biggest cheerleader. 
I want all my friends to win. I want to be millionaire adjacent. I don't necessarily want to be a millionaire because that comes with hard work and sometimes I just be wanting to chill. But if my friends are millionaires and I know they can all be, they gonna fly me out. We all going to Greece. They not gonna be like, I'm going to Greece. You ain't got no money, you can't come. They gonna be like, hey girl, we going on a trip. And I'm gonna be like, I ain't got no money. They gonna be like, I didn't ask you that. We going to Greece. So that's my superpower, loving the people around me and encouraging them. Okay, so Korea is actually very like world renowned for their like skincare products and all this stuff, beauty products. But I'm not into that. I think I had like one face wash that I've only been using like the last couple years. So I washed my face. And now I use a moisturizer because Korea has horrible pollution air quality. So I'm not really into Korean products, um, but a lot of people are. I'm just not. If I could have five more minutes of sleep versus like a 10 step face routine, your girl gonna sleep. So that ain't for me. And for hair, um, I knew Korea wouldn't have black girl hair products. So I packed a lot when I came here. And then a year in, I went home. So I packed a lot and brought some more here. But luckily in my city or nearby my city, there's a wonderful black woman named Jessica. She married a Korean here. And she has a, hair, a beauty supply store here. And she supplies a lot of beauty products specifically for black hair. So shout out to Jessica. She out here doing it big and she, she doing it for the girls out here. But mostly I just bring them from home. I haven't been, but people said Jeju is like the Hawaii of South Korea and I really wanna go. So I'd say Jeju, cause I'm a beach girl. I love the beach and it's on my list. Hopefully this year I'll make it. Um, dating in South Korea. Mm -hmm. It's life. No, um, there are options. Sadly, South Korea isn't as accepting yet of like dating foreigners. It's much better to casually date and by casually date, have sex with. But not many families are still as accepting of foreigners marrying Koreans. And Korean is a culture where the family has a lot to say about it. So a lot of guys here, I can't speak for women, don't date foreigners seriously. So that's kind of like hookup culture because they know they can't marry you because they can't bring you home. It's not my struggle because I'm not, I like chocolate, see I'm a little thick. I just like chocolate in general. So black men is where is that for me? And that leaves either teachers or military. Come, 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 come. Just come, just come to South Korea. Black, come on. We need more black people out here. Just come, make this money, ball out of control, live your best life. I would give you my Facebook, but I don't accept people unless we're friends. So you can follow me on Instagram at amor, A-M-O-R underscore maracuja, M-A-R-A-C-U-J-A. And that's just passion fruit in Portuguese because I lived in Brazil for a while. And passion fruit is one of my favorite fruits. What's your first memory? <laughs> <laughs> There's a video, video. Hi right. to! It's a movie. Oh, okay. Hi to! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to share your story or have us visit your region, send us a message on any of our social media platforms or via our website. That's good.